The following files have been classified. Top secret. By order of the administrator. General Notice 001 Alpha in order to prevent knowledge of SCP-001 from being leaked, several no-false SCP-001 files have been created alongside the true file files. All files concerning the nature of SCP-001, including the decoy, decoys, are protected by a memetic kill agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest in any authorized personnel attempting to access the file. Revealing the true nature natures of SCP-001 to the general public is cause for execution, except as required under <coughs> Warning Any non-authorized personnel accessing this file will be immediately terminated through Barry Melangford Memetic Kill Agent Scrolling down without proper memetic inoculation will result in immediate cardiac arrest followed by death. You have been warned. Memetic kill agent activated. Continued life signs confirmed. Removing safety interlocks. Welcome, authorized personnel. Please select your desired file. QNTM's proposal. The lock. Item, hash SCP-001. Object class safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-001 is to be kept locked along with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sublevel 1 of Site 10. The vault is a custom manufactured, reinforced concrete and steel, vertical octagonal prism C appendix U for full schematics with a 2000 kg, 0.9 meters thick, time-locked access portal in the ceiling. The time locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Wymiski. Access is conditional on three factor authorization, e.g., key card plus fingerprint plus passphrase. SCP 001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. Description SCP 001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellipsoidal tilde 15.1 cm by 15.4 cm by 16.5 cm onyx gemstone with a mottled white pattern. Wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator and both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree of gold metal. The gold is sculpted into broad strokes at what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object but with increasing latitude the pattern becomes progressively more intricate. Near the North Pole, also called the Lock or Singularity C Acquisition Report, below, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of optical or electron beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigation is pending advances in microscopy technology. The gemstone continuously emits a small quantity tilde 34.5007 to 34.5010 MW of thermal radiation in the microwave range. As a result, the gold filigree is warm to the touch. The white mottled areas emit fractionally more radiation than the black onyx areas. Other than this, SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, and, so far, indestructible sea log for Project Pluto, below. It's onyx. Gold composition is guessed from visual inspection, since the taking of samples for chemical analysis has proven impossible. Project Pluto Master Log the following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Conventional lockpicking. 
Brute force assault with hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, band saw, etc. Sustained heating to 5000 degrees centigrade in industrial furnace artifact reflected all thermal energy, did not increase in temperature. Direct application of industrial cutting laser tilde 160 kW square centimeters concentrated on the lock artifact reflected all energy. Compression in vice, car crusher, hydraulic diamond face press all destroyed. Application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds no reaction. Detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5 night TNT equivalent at point blank range no effect. Detonation of a 15 night TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point blank range, authorizatio granted retroactively by Dr. Miski, no effect. Project Pluto is to be immediately terminated. Dr. Hack Project Pluto is ongoing with the full support of Foundation resources. Dr. Miski SCP-001 Acquisition Report The earliest record of SCP-001 is in the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish aristocrat Sir Edwin Young. 3rd Baronet 1611-1677 As was customary at the time, Young kept a cabinet of curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined providence such as sculptures, preserved creatures, and trinkets. Young's journal includes references to his acquisition in 1654 of Ainbu Jewel of Oix and Filigree Gold, of Fies beyond rational Tatumet while traveling across the Mesopotamian desert. The journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a bitter, blated place, older than days, or what Young took to be a temple to a fear own death god. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable side of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. Young's account of his journey to the location of the ruin is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Young's Elexios of Curious Providence lay in storage for several centuries after he died. In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, and priceless example of ancient Sumerian metalworking. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes in Young's sketch as tertiary Sumerian cuneiform, circa 3400 BCE. Only a partial translation is possible. With loss and we I a noun, apact, probably a proper noun, on this ending finality. Joy plus permanence, possibly protection. Mr. M. C. Candlish, who performed the translation, noted. This appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. Apact is the name of whatever is imprisoned within the gemstone. SCP-001 was finally placed on semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed that the mottled white patterns on the surface of SCP-001 resembled the cosmic microwave background, a pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire observable universe, as mapped by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe earlier that year. Closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001 along with Baronet Young's journal was immediately purchased by a Foundation Front organization and transferred to Site 10 where Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Wymiski performed initial routine analysis. 
Research continues under the auspices of Dr. Miski, Dr. Hack having recently left the foundation. Young's journal also includes several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitted into its north pole. The key has not been recovered.